What's up, guys? How are you? Yeah. Uh, my name is Kieran Deal. I'm Indian, and I am terrible at yoga. <laughs> terrible. Not taking over the world. Um, I live in uh, what I would call a questionable neighborhood. Anybody else live in a questionable neighborhood? Uh, I realized this when I got home the other day and there were like five guys with like guns drawn SWAT team style in the house opposite my house. And me and my roommate, we got very excited because we don't have cable. <laughs> and we're looking through the window very excited and the best part of this whole thing is that a little Asian postal worker, she just walks across the entire scene. She opens the mailbox, and then she puts the mail into the mailbox, and all five of the guys are like, <laughs> and that little Asian postal worker was like, I got a job to do. <laughs> and then she just walked right back, and guys, I just thought that would be like the best commercial for USPS. <laughs> ever. It's just that 30 seconds of that little Asian postal worker and then it's like USPS and she's like, you're welcome. <laughs> the motto for the postal service, the motto for the USPS is on the outside of the New York City post office. I'm going to tell it to you now paraphrased. It goes like this. It goes, neither rain nor sleet nor gloom of night shall stop these winged carriers from their path which is beautiful, right? I mean, that's poetry. That is like the archangel Gabriel is gonna just fly down and deliver you your Ikea catalog. <laughs> it's beautiful. Do you know what the motto for FedEx is? It got there. <laughs> the motto for UPS, yeah. The motto for UPS is, what can Brown do for you? <laughs> Which, guys, one day I hope to put on t-shirts because of my brown face. That's, that's why. You see it. I know you see it. Hi, guys. Hi, minorities. Um, I'm a feminist. Is anyone else here a feminist? Yeah, feminist. I am a feminist. I'm a feminist, but I got into a fender bender the other day, and this bitch, <laughs> this bitch steps out of the vehicle in these like stripper heels and these booty short, and it was just two cheeks, one short, do you know? <laughs> just a cascade of ass on the sidewalk, tits up to her eyeballs, and I was like, excuse me, ma'am, can I see your driver's license? And her response to me was, <sighs> and I found myself looking like a fellow, like adult woman, human being in the face. And I was like, we aren't equal. <laughs> That's what I thought, guys. I thought we shouldn't have the same right to vote. Like, I should get four votes. You don't need any votes which is mean, that's mean. But then I looked at her car, and I realized like I'm judging this woman, but she is doing so much better than me on every possible level. She was driving like an S-Class Mercedes with a leather interior. I drive the equivalent of like a shopping cart with an engine. <laughs> and I realized at that moment that all my life I've been using like 100% of my brain but I should have been using like 18% of my vagina. <laughs> because this is the money spot. <laughs> Rings and mortgages and car payments and 401ks, ladies and gentlemen. 401ks, you could do a dance for it. There's a woman clapping in the front. She's older, she knows. 401ks. Yeah. 401ks, guys. And I'm not saying that 
course you want to use like 100% of your vagina. You're using 100%. If you're using 100%, then you're a Kardashian. You know what I mean? Yeah, no good. No good. You're a Playboy bunny. If you're using 0%, though, then you're like Condoleezza Rice or Madeline Albright or a golem in a cave. It's just like... And that is where I have been operating from, in the zero percent. All I'm saying is that sexuality is like blood pressure. You just want to get it in a healthy range. Just like that 18 to 35 percent range. Ladies and gentlemen. I do get lonely, though, in LA. I think that LA can be a really lonely city. Agree to disagree, sir. Um, I think that LA can be a really lonely city, but then I remember that I'm a woman. I'm a woman, yeah. It's like technically I can make a person just to hang out with me. And I think that's why most women have babies. I think it's just for the company of someone who cannot leave you for 18 years. You know? Octomom has 16 children. If even eight of those children like her, that bitch has more friends than I do. <laughs> when you have children though, it's almost as though, it's almost as though you looked around at all the other people in the world ever and you were like, you know what? No, I think I'm gonna make my own. <laughs> because there's nothing like making it from scratch, guys. Just. Making it homemade. This is how I make children. It's really awkward and disappointing for everyone involved. Just <laughs> a lot of tears, guys. It's a lot of tears. Um, uh, I'm an actor. Uh, I'm doing the acting thing in Los Angeles. I go out for a lot of what I like to call uh, weepy bitches. Uh, anybody know? Uh, weepy bitches. Um, let me, let me give you an example of a weepy bitch that I played. These are the words in the script verbatim from a real audition I went on. It goes like this. Okay. If I go back to Pakistan, <laughs> my father will burn me at the stake because I am in love with a white man named Todd. <laughs> and in the middle of this, I'm like, are we done? Like, can I go to a Chipotle now? Like, eat some beef, disgrace my people that way. You know? And it's like you walk into that audition and you think to yourself, God, this crap is offensive, you know? And then you walk out and you think, God, I hope I book this. <laughs> and my mother is like, God, I hope you book this. Because I don't have health insurance. So here's hoping, guys. Keep your fingers crossed. You guys have been so much fun. That's my time. Thank you so much. Thank you.